Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, Rebuilding Helsingborg, with me, Daniel. We're back today for part six, and it is the final part of our first season. A season which has been very comfortable, if we're being brutally honest. We come back today for our final two league games, and I can confirm, despite another defeat in our last two games, we are champions, we are promoted, and we're looking forward to a season in the top tier of Swedish football. And we've managed to outdo what Helsingborg did in real life, which was always the initial objective here. Of course, the battle for second, third and fourth will potentially go all the way to the wire. And we're going to have a say in it because we face third place Ersters today. If they win, they're still in the hunt for second and the automatic promotion spot. And then against Braga on the final day of the season, we've got a fan day where we've got to try and impress. For us though, we're trying to decide who can and cannot make the cut next year. Which young stars are going to get a chance in the team. Which players are going to be on the way out and which ones deserve a new contract. So if you're looking forward to seeing the last two games of the season as we prepare for a big summer at this football club, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. The Hemel save is back tomorrow. It is absolutely huge. A finish to the season there and a big game for it as well. You can find a link to that playlist and anything you've missed from it up in the eye above. There's also the head coach, the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the merchandise store too. And you can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below. But for us today, it's a big moment of reflection because let's be fair, this is the job we expected to do first year. The real work starts now. We've got almost double the wage bill for next year and we've got to start making decisions. So I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to do that over the next few weeks. We are looking at youngsters, we are looking at who can develop. But for now, it's more about rotating the squad a little, giving some of the slightly younger ones a chance, but still making sure we get results. If we have a look at the schedule, see what's been happening since you were last with me. It's been a bit of a mixed bag. We had a really poor Vaseline side, the first game off camera. We won that one by five goals to nil. Hendrickson, Van den Herk and Lerper had given us a 3-0 lead at the break. Lingman and a sub Kaid got a fourth and fifth. We then beat Varnamo 2-0 away from home. Lingman and Kaja line them with second half goals for a tough defeat away at Basteras. To be fair, this was partly my fault. We'd won promotion just before this game. And at the 70 minute mark, I took off Vidal to rest him. I took off Alma Jed, who was returning from injury. You saw the impact he had the two games before. And when he's not on the pitch, we struggle. So Van den Hurt's goal was cancelled out late on. And we ended up falling to defeat. We did bounce back though against John Kapings last time out. A 3-1 victory and a Taha Rally hat-trick. A man who, to be fair to him, has really come on leaps and bounds this second half of the year. I'm hopeful that next season he'll be able to have a stronger one, get a bit more on the ball with a bit more space at the top level, and hopefully he's someone who will improve as we go through the standards. So for now, we're in a good position, we're comfortable, we've got loads of brilliant youngsters that we can consider for the future. Nilsson, two and a half star at the age of 17, 21-year-old centre-half coming back from his long-term injury, and 16-year-olds that are almost ready to make their way into the game. So there's a lot to be excited about here. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how some of these kids develop next season because I am going to try and carry a slightly smaller first team squad, try and get a few off the wage bill and maybe rely on a few of these youngsters as backup players because let's be honest, the fixture schedule isn't that taxing in Sweden. So let's go and get through to the first game today, a chance for us to really enjoy ourselves here and given our home form in recent months, this is probably one of our best chances to win as well. We go to Ersters though and I want to give the title race the respect and I want to give the promotion race the respect as well. So we're going to make sure that we put a strong side out today. And that means Anders Lindegaard will return in goal. He is in in place of Jolson who has been doing really well and he is improving and he's now the same standard. But for this game only, Lindegaard will play. Jolson will start in goal next week. We've got to take out Lerper who's picked up a knock on the right. He's going to be replaced by Karjalainen, who's actually done really well in recent weeks. On the bench, Almajed is there, so I think he's going to come back in. And in fact, we'll bring him on from the start because he's younger than the man that he's replacing in midfield. And otherwise, the only choices are, do we bring in someone like Suljic at right back, who's a little bit younger? Do we really want to toy around with the defence that much? I'm not so sure we do. So in terms of the squad, I think that's what we're going to go for. The 11 is Lindegaard in goal for the first time in a couple of months. Landgren and Davidson, the fullbacks with Weyberg and Vidal. Now the best player at the club at centre-half. 
What a pro. So glad to have him tied down to a new contract. We've got Almajed, Henriksen and Lingman. The three are reunited in the middle of midfield. And Tahar Ali with Kaja Linen over on the right. And Vandenherg up front. Ten goals this season. He signed a new deal now till 2023. He's happy because we've got promoted. And now we've got to get established at the top level. We'll think about tactics. We'll think about changes in the next few weeks. But for now, let's go and make sure we finish the season in style. Lots of good players in this team. So let's hope we can put in a fitting display. And here are the lineups. No players we really recognise in the home team today. But there is a player called Mark Rochester, who I would assume is going to be of British descent. We'll go and take a quick look at him, actually. Is there anyone else who should be a superstar there? Because, look, they're one of the top sides in the league. If we go and have a look through them, where is Rochester? Oh, he's the number nine. He's an attacking midfielder. He's very good. He's actually Danish. Has he played in England at all? He hasn't. Has he got any English relatives? Right, England, Jamaica and Denmark. There's an interesting mix. Good footballer though. Very solid for the level. And maybe shows the inconsistency of the AI. Because I don't think these squads are that much worse than ours. But for some reason, they've got nowhere near the points tallies. Yes, they've got a striker who can't finish, but he's a very good footballer. And I'd expect this side to pose a challenge for us. So into the first half we go and see how we get on. Because realistically, our players could be on the beach mentally. Hopefully, they'll be trying to earn new contracts though. As Hendrickson's got an early free kick, really good angle for him to get the shot away. Nilsson manages to tip it behind for a corner. It will be taken as an in-swinger. Left footed by Davidson, the fullback. Another one of those that's reached 30, we might have to think about replacing. But at the moment, the only area I'm certain in the summer we need to do work is right back. I'll be interested to see what a lot of you guys think as we move along in the winter. But for me, that's really the main area. And then it's just bolstering the squad in other key positions. As Davidson's got a throw on the left to Almadjed. Makes a real difference having him back in the side. Did come back briefly before getting injured again. But now he's back as Vidal plays Hendrickson in. Out wide to Karjalainen on the right. Probably one of those that might be a casualty this winter as Vanden Herk gets in, shoots into the bottom corner. New contract, more happiness and a very good finish to go with it. Goals galore and it's 19 minutes gone. We're 1-0 up and Vanden Herk is in the best form of the season for him. Well, if you look at the stats, compared to some of our recent performances, take out that 5-0. This is the most dominant one we've had in a long time. I'm really pleased with it, albeit the last 15 minutes has been poor. But it's 1-0 at the break. We've had five shots on target. We've restricted them to next to nothing with our first choice midfield. I'm so, so pleased with the way we've turned out today. Especially given the fact that we've got nothing to play for. So with five gone in the second half, the experience has made the difference. But it won't be long before some of the young subs come on. As we pass the hour mark, I think we're getting towards that territory now. So let's go and make a few changes. Tahar Ali not had the same impact that he did last week. I'm going to bring Kaid on for Karjalainen and switch him to the right this time. We're also going to take off Lingman. He's going to be replaced by Rasmus Johnson. Another one of those at 31 that maybe will have to be off in the summer. I mean in the season break. I keep saying summer. It's natural habit. You'll have to forgive me. But he's going to be 32 by the time the next season starts. Almajed in a holding role we've got to look after. So Kanto is on for him. We're also going to take off Weber got a yellow for Suljic and Davidson, who's had an average game for Rursa, as the Lone Star deserves a little bit of action. 25 to go, five changes made. Hopefully, we'll see this one out comfortably. Well, into the last 10 minutes, the hosts have managed their first shot on target. Not that we've seen anything from it, but it's been a really comfortable display. Loads of possession, loads of chances. And to be honest, we've never really looked like conceding. The 93 minutes are up. It's a 1-0 win. Ersters have lost their chance at automatic promotion. And I think with that, subject to other results, we've won whoever was in second before an automatic place in the top tier two. The lads are motivated as we praise them for their performance. But we remind them, it's a fan day next week. You cannot afford to get complacent. In fact, the second place side are not up because Varnamo won. What a comeback they've made from earlier on in the season. Two points behind with a game to go. It's going to be a very interesting final week. We're playing one of the sides in mid-table with absolutely nothing to play for. So we'll be back for that one in a moment. Try and put a show on for the fans and then head to our end of season review and decide what we're going to do in this off-season break. Well, we've got a Swedish Cup draw in between these two games. A bit of a weirdly scheduled competition with nothing mentioned for three months. It says even more weirdly, we're one of two teams that have been seeded first for the draw. 
But there's hundreds of teams left, aren't there? What's going on here? And why are we a first seed with Malmo? Because surely loads of these sides are top tier clubs. I don't understand how that works. Because then there's a group of seeded teams further down. And we're going into a group stage now, having played a knockout game before. This is a bizarre cup. Right, let's go and get through to the next teams. We are in group one, so I'm guessing we can skip ahead a bit. Is this just basically a Champions League? Don't give us Malmo. Is that guaranteed? So, like, the two first seeds, the two seconds, the two thirds, they're all playing each other. So, we are playing the biggest side. Is that maybe what it is of the top 16 ranked teams? That we're then the bottom one against the top one? I don't know. Someone, if you're Swedish or you understand the Swedish Cup, or you've looked it up before I have, then just explain it to me. Let's see who we're going to get out the rest. Basically, we want to avoid the top teams in our leagues, but we shouldn't really be scared of anyone. Ike Braga, who we're playing next weekend, they're the first ones to come out. And then the second opponent is going to be Sandvikens. They are in the third tier of Swedish football, and they're a mid-table team there too. So perhaps not one we need to worry about as much. How many teams get out of the group? Only one. That would suggest it's only one. Is there any lucky losers or anything like that? Let's have a look at the rules. There's not. It's straight to a quarter final. So with Malmo in the group, this is going to be very difficult for us. On the flip side of that, if we get out of the group with them, you'd probably suggest we've got a good chance of winning the Swedish league next year because they've got to be the strongest side there. But they're only third in the division at the moment. Four points behind Norrköping and AIK are level with them too. So maybe they're not quite as strong as it's made out to be. Let's skip ahead to the weekend though. Final game of the season on the way. Fitness test time ahead of the final game of the season. Let's go and enjoy this day. The fans will be out in numbers. Over 5,000 sold. About 1,000 extra to normal. They'll see us lift the title. They'll also get to see hopefully some goals because it's a big fan day for us. We are going to bring in a few of the slightly younger players as well. So Tahar Ali is going to start on the right today and Les Lerpers fit. He is, but not fit enough to start. So we're going to give Kaid the youngster a go on the left. In central midfield, we're going to bring Kanto in, who I think is just 20. He is, so he'll be the box to box. We're also going to put Lerper on the bench for the injured Hendrickson. That occurred in midweek between the games. And finally, we'll switch the keepers. So young Jolson will get another go, just 23 years of age. And he might well be first choice next year, depending on Lindegaard's progress. I think other than that, we're as strong as we can be. The younger players are in the team. Should we put some of the under-19s on the bench? I feel like it might be fair. Let's see who the best rated ones are. We'll be back in a minute when we've done that. There we go then. Two kids on the bench. Nilsson, a 17-year-old right winger. And also Bergman, a 17-year-old centre midfielder. They'll both get an outing off the substitution bench today. But let's go and get into the final game of the season. It's a strong enough side to hopefully get the win. Let's see if the lads can deliver. Well, three changes for us overall. One of them enforced due to injury. One change for our visitors. A side that I know a little bit, but not any of these players at the moment. So let's get through the dressing room. Of course, we want to put out a marker as well. We're going to be playing them in February in that Swedish Cup group stage. So let's hope we can really scare them today with a big win. Lots of fans in the building. Hopefully they're going to enjoy it. Into the first half we go. Let's get on the front foot. As early doors, we've got a corner kick with Davidson. In swinger from the right-hand side. Header off the post by Vidal. And this time it's the other centre-half. Not scored yet this season, but what better time than the final day. Weyberg in at the front post. Taps in a rebound off the woodwork. And we're 1-0 up with 10 minutes on the clock. And to be fair, it had been a nothing game to that point. So let's hope we can deliver something special today. I'm keeping an eye on that race for second as well. Because Ersters are 2-0 down. If Van Armo can win, it would be one hell of a comeback. Header from Braga just over the bar there. We've got to be careful defensively. I am looking at this area and thinking where do we improve next season. I'd love to get your suggestions in the comments because I'm looking at right back. I'm looking maybe even at centre half as well. I think going forward is maybe just adding squad depth as Vidal's in from a corner, headed just over the bar. A half time, it's going to be a pretty boring 1 0, I think, which probably isn't what we wanted on a fan day. So it's a long ball forward, headed as far as Ali, playing off the right today, heads it down for Kanto. He's now got a new contract for next season as well. Up to Vanden Herk. Oh, what a goal! That's what you want when you've got a big crowd in. 
A beautiful 30-yard thunderbolt right into the top corner off the underside of the bar. And that could grace any occasion. And what better than a day you're going to lift the league title. Phenomenal effort to go 2-0 up. And Vandenhoek, since his new contract, he looks a different player. Into the second half, we've been the dominant side. And at the moment, there's a big swing in the second promotion spot. We have got a fight back from Ersters at the moment. Van Armo have rushed into a three-goal lead. And Vidal skimmed the crossbar for us. We're not the dramatic event of the day. But we're certainly enjoying our afternoon. Let's have a look at the substitutes though. Kaid has not had a good game in fairness to him. Lerpert will make his return from injury. In fact, he won't. Anton Nilsson will make his debut off the bench there. Not sure if he played for them before, but certainly hasn't under me. In midfield, we're going to take off Lingman for Johnson. Bergman will come on for Canto. They'll go the other way round, I think. Not sure which way is actually best for them, to be brutally honest. Looks like Bergman's a better footballer. Almajed will be replaced in a holding role. Langram will go into there and will bring on a right back in the shape of Lerper, who will drop a bit deeper today. And then up front, do we take off either of the other two? There's no need to make the fifth sub at the minute. 20 to go, 2-0 up, we'll make a decision later. Now we're getting the warning about Vidal, so he is going to come off for Suljic in a moment. Just seven left, he's one yellow away from a booking as well, so it's silly to get that on the last day. He comes off, Suljic is on, and he's done a bit part off the bench this season. He's done it pretty well, he deserves his run out. As Davidson loses out on the left-hand side, but recycles it really quickly. Plays down the line to Tahar Ali, who's had a great finish to the season and another good game today. Cutting in from the left to Bergman, the youngster, into Nilsson. Oh, it was almost the perfect goal. One youngster assist in the other, but it's deflected over the bar. Corner kick to be taken by Davidson. Outswinger to the back post, Suljic up unmarked. Save to Nilsson, he's offside. We're really putting the pressure on. It's a big finish, but it's still just 2-0. And what on earth is happening at the top of the table? We win comfortably. It was a thoroughly professional performance. Nice work from everyone. A great way to finish. Now let's see what happened with the second promotion place. It is Van Armo. They win 3-1 to the tall draw of Ersters. A big turnaround from them. All great lost by two goals to one. They dropped down into third place. And Joan Kapins could just not keep up. They drew 0-0 away at GIIS. The pre-season promotion favourites finished sixth. And they lost again against a relegation scrapper. So thoroughly deserved outcomes. Varnamo go up to the top tier. Back-to-back -back promotions for them. A return to the top flight for us. And a much needed million pound into the coffers. We're having a look at the scout reports. That's going to be a big part of the off-season now. The fan day a success. Crowd of six and a half thousand. And a really good experience. Including a wonder goal from Van den Herk. Let's go and have a look at the end of season review though. The final action for today's episode. We'll see what we've got to look forward to next season. And you can advise me who we need to replace. And here we go. The title that was demanded in the first season has well been delivered by the end. Look at the signings that came in. Most of these had nothing to do with us. We bought Rursa on loan who did okay. Carr was bought in by the director of football at the end of the window. As was Kanto, who's not mentioned there for some reason. But otherwise, they all came in earlier in the window. Transfers out. None of these were ours, I don't think, apart from the goalkeeper. 60 grand for him. He's gone to Elfsborg, yet to play a game for them. And loans out. Benjamin Aqua went the second half of the year. And he's played 11 games. He's improved a lot. And that might be useful for next season. I'm contemplating replacing holding mid for number 10. We'll see if he can be a star in that. In terms of the season results, we were expected to finish first, and we did. We had a little bit of a stutter towards the end of the season, but thankfully so did everyone else. Vandenhoek in the end almost got one in two thanks to his new contract and his improved morale after that. And the average home attendance, well over 4,000. I'd expect it to creep up to five or six as we return to the top tier next season. In the Swedish Cup, we're still in. We won our only game so far. And in the group stages, we face Malmo. And that's going to be our very next game in February. Let's get through to the moments to remember. 5-0 win against Vassalans, who did get relegated, was the biggest result. A match to remember, a 2-0 win at Varnamo. That was the one that wrapped up promotion. And then a 2-1 win at GAIS, which I think we saw on camera. It was the one before deadline day, wasn't it? And Tahar Ali's super goal was the goal of the season. The finances have not been great, but the sponsorship is a massive help to us now. Lingman, Vandenhoek, Hendrickson all tied down. Good job because they're the big shirt sellers too. 
We stay with a two and a half star reputation. But will promotion change that as next year comes around? There is our best 11 for the year. What do you make of it? For me, Langren's the clear weakness. I'd like a big upgrade up front, but I don't think we're going to get it. Otherwise, I could probably live with most of this squad. It's not going to win us a league, but it probably do quite well. I just want to add to the squad a little bit more. Let's get through the accolades. Manager of the month twice. Hopefully, we'll get manager of the season too. Vandenherk and Ali breaking some records. Lingman breaking one. Lindegaard as well. It's just been a really good season overall, hasn't it? Fastest goal, oldest player, youngest scorer at the lot. There's absolutely tons of records being broken. We've got fans player of the season and young player of the season is Kasper Vidal. No real surprises there. He's been brilliant youngster. And most importantly, he secured his future too. So we've got him to look forward to next season. His history in the making though as we return to the top tier. Now we've got to do what Elsinbor can't in real life. And that is stay afloat pretty comfortably. In real life, they're right in a relegation mix and they've sacked their manager. We're going to be trying to avoid both of those things. Or it'll be a very premature end to the save. Let's finish that off. Have a look at the schedule then. Because pre-season doesn't start till mid-January. I think the league season starts about March time. But we've got cup games in February. So we're going to get a little bookmark in our transfer window. Let me know where you think we need to improve. And we will be back for Malmo, a big test in the cup at the start of the season. If you're looking forward to it and you did enjoy our first season in Sweden, please do put a thumbs up on the video. As I said before, let me know where you think we should improve and which players should be casualties of our success. And if you want to stay up to date and find out how our first big summer transfer special goes with our director of football, Andreas Grangfist, then please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. We'll have daily FM22 content from this series and the Hemel Save, which returns tomorrow at 3.30. You can find a link to that playlist in the eye above, as well as the football podcast, the Twitch channel and the merchandise store too. But above my head now is a recent Hemel episode. Thank you as always for watching. As next time out, we'll be back to face the best side in Sweden as well as reflect on our transfer window so far. I'll see you there. <laughs>